The imaginary line between Maine and New Brunswick was vaguely defined by royal proclamation in 1763, nearly warred over through the first half of the 19th century, set in place in 1842 and then hardened by the events of 9-11. Jacques Poitras argues this artificial bifurcation helped create the conditions for a flourishing of a bicultural bilingual community on the British side, but on the other side set the stage for Acadian assimilation into the American melting pot. From Fort Kent to Campobello Island, as it was in the 19th century, so it is today. Decisions made far away from the headwaters of the St. John River in Washington, Ghent, London and Ottawa have dramatic impact on those who live on this border. Imaginary line had, had been something that had occurred to me early on because uh, it fit the theme of the book, which is that the border is uh, a line on a map that you don't really see when you're on it and that the people who live near it don't really consider to be um, a line either. And so it really, I mean, it really is an invisible line or an imaginary line. And uh, in the northern part of the border, it's the French language that connects people, family ties. There's trade that connects people. Um, proximity, obviously, but people who are close to each other physically want to interact and uh, they're going to f try to find a way to overcome an arbitrary division between them, an administrative marker. This book and telling these stories about individuals and families on either side of this border, it's a great piece of journalism in the sense journalists should show, not tell, and that's a, tr a standard sort of trope. Uh, he is illustrating a whole bunch of themes that are very important right now, cross-border trade, again, security, uh, how we're going to relate to our biggest neighbor. Uh, I recommend this book to anybody to read it. It's a great read, and, uh, and you'll really enjoy a lot of the people you meet in the book. The security measures after 9-11 have really changed uh, a lot on the border. They haven't changed the spirit of friendship or the relationship or the sort of natural human desire to be connected, but what's happened is uh, a lot of people who used to cross regularly re have refused on principle to get passports because they just think it's, it's uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be happening, there shouldn't be a requirement. 